KDM's big adventure model started back in 2003 with the 950. We rode the Super Enduro version and loved the big torque and how it felt like a big Enduro bike, at least on the open tracks. In 2013, KDM brought out the 1190. In 2015, they went further with the KDM 1290 Super Adventure. 160 horsepower, massive 30 litre fuel tank, and lots of electronics to satisfy the most demanding adventure nerd. Cornering lights, cruise control, motor slip regulation, hill hold control, automatic indicator turn reset, and semi-active suspension. In 2017, two variants were introduced, the road-oriented 1290 Super Adventure S with a 19-inch front wheel and 17-inch rear wheel. The 1290 Super Adventure R was the off-road model with 21-inch front wheel, 18-inch rear wheel, and a smaller windscreen. There were big changes in 2021. Essentially, only the wheels and brakes remained the same. There was adaptive cruise control, remote key access, anti-dive function, lean control, updated electronic suspension control on the S model. These were added to the long list of electronics. A smaller 23 litre fuel tank using three sections to lower the gravity. Steering damper came standard. It was 229 kilograms without fuel. So what do we like? The linear power delivery. The engine was already well developed from previous road models. It has huge amounts of torque from two and a half thousand revs. Below that, the big twin does a lot of chain snatching. The handling and suspension on both the S and R variants is excellent. Even the dirt oriented R model is very capable on the road, despite the 21 inch front wheel. And with 160 horsepower and the right tires, <laughs> there are owners who even do track days on this animal. What else? The ergonomics work well, upright sitting position, plenty of room for standing, even for taller riders, a very large bright dash, uh, tubeless rims on the R and S models, crash bars and skid plate are standard. We haven't ridden other adventure bikes in this class, but we read a pile of reviews and the consistent summary is the 1290 Super Adventure is the choice for off-road riding. The negatives? It's a short list and mostly centred on the off-road nature of the big Kato. There's a choice of two seat heights, but it's still tall. Riders under six foot or 183 centimetres might be uncomfortable. The short windscreen is adjustable, but lacks the wind protection you'll find on the more road-oriented adventure bikes. The seat is firm and comfortable for at least a few hours, but other bikes in this class have seats better suited for all-day riding. Pinion passengers may find it a bit small as well. The lack of heated grips is strange when you consider all the other features that are standard. Reliability, we scoured the forums for known issues. The main thing we could pick was a small number of electrical issues over the years. The screens occasionally fail and are replaced under warranty, <laughs> although some owners say any warranty claim with KTM USA can be a real battle. Occasionally the engine won't start at all and some electrical gremlin needs to be fixed. Error codes can flash on the screen because the system is very sensitive to voltage fluctuations. Some owners advise always starting the engine in neutral to minimise this. So who needs a bike this big? Accident statistics in many countries show riders in their 40s and 50s are now dying more often than riders in their 20s. Some argue this is a combination of older guys returning to bikes after a 20 year break and overestimating their abilities. And of course, the obsession with bigger must be better. Of course, there are times these huge adventure bikes are perfect. Carrying a passenger, loaded heavily for longer trips involving camping. If you mainly ride highways, it will be more comfortable, less affected by wind, heaps of power for overtaking. And in a small number of cases, there are very talented riders who can actually handle these beasts off-road. These are aliens like Paul Tarez and Tony Bow, who are disguised as humans. But for us everyday humans, if you plan to ride a lot of dirt roads, 
you may be safer on adventure bikes well below 1000 cc's in capacity. Trapped under your bike in the coffee shop car park? Use our BMW crane to lift the bike off you. Only $85,000 this month. Be quick. Having said that, there are always softer maps that soften the power delivery. Here's a dyno chart for the KDM 1290. You can tame the beast when needed, but you're still dealing with a very heavy bike if you enjoy rough tracks. Will the KDM 1290 Super Adventure suit you? If you want this huge engine and plan to ride on dirt roads a lot, sure. But I suspect the reality is most riders in this category will spend far more time on the highway and you may prefer the comfort of other models like the BMW R1250GS Adventure. In some countries it outsells the KDM by a long way and I suspect this is why. Are you a shorter rider? The Ducati Multistrada V4S has a lower seat height. Are you on a budget? Generally, the Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Explorer will be cheaper. One thing is for sure, we are spoiled for choice nowadays. What is the biggest adventure bike you have ridden or owned? Do you think less is more? <laughs> or more is more? As always, we are keen to hear your opinions in the comments.